Welcome to my fish room. Hi, I'm Richelle from Quebec Cyclidé, your local fish store in Terrebonne, Quebec, right outside of Montreal. Today, I'm gonna show you the whole section of my breeding facility dedicated to my growing tanks. So you're gonna see my little babies, my newborns, and my little juvies as well. So let's go. So this week we're gonna be achieving a huge milestone on YouTube. We are gonna get the 1,000 subscribers. Because of this, I wanted to make something special for you. So the first video I ever made putting myself out there was of my breeding facility, but the breeders. I was showing my beautiful fish and a little bit of the growing. But now what I wanna show you is the growing facility. The baby said, in the end of that video, I said, maybe for another day? Well, today's that day. To those of you who've already bred cichlids, you know that it's not just breeding them, it's not just getting them to breed together, find the right ratio, the males, the females, get the right decoration, the parameters, it's not just that. You have to grow these fish. And well, as for me, since this is my bread and butter, I have to be clever for this. To those of you who've seen my last videos on Embunas and the Olunokara Aquarium, well, you know how I stand strongly against hybrids. Because I have so many breeding colonies and that the juvenile and Bunas and Olonokara, there are many similarities, it, it would be too easy to mix them up. They wouldn't be hybrids, but they wouldn't be well identified until they're older. So I have to separate all the fish throughout their growth. So on one side, I have 27 20 gallon tanks, each filled with different species of cichlids. On the other side, I have 18 10 gallon tanks that are separated as well. When the cichlids are born, I usually isolate my female in the last week of her term. She will spit out the babies in my little isolation tank. All my isolation tanks have a little air stone in it to make the water circulate. If not, if there's not enough circulation in your isolation tank, the water doesn't get changed enough and it can be dangerous for your fish. So they need oxygen, they need water current, just like the adults. Once they've grown a little bit and they're used to eating, I will take them and put them in my 10 gallon tanks. Because they're very small, in the 20 gallon, they might be shy to come and eat and I want them to grow as fast as possible. So I put them in my 10 gallons and then when they're an appropriate size, I bring them to the 20 gallon tanks. I feed my babies, depending on their size, flake food when they're very small. They only can eat that. And when they grow bigger, I mix the flake food with the North Fin Cichlid one millimeter. When they've grown a little bit, I feed them with North Fin Cichlid one millimeter formula and with North Fin Community 0.5 millimeters. The community food is a little bit fattier, so it's good for, for fry to grow. And the cichlid is what the recipe that they will be eating throughout their lives. The community also is full of marine protein and algae, which are great ingredients for all African cichlids. If the cichlid is strictly herbivore, I have a colony of trophies. My maybe trophies, well, they only eat the green flakes for a little bit longer. And eventually I start feeding them the veggie formula. I also do that with the Pseudotrophius d'Amazonie. For filtration, I use sponge filters. The sponge filters are great for the bacteria cycle and they also provide a lot of oxygen to the tank. They're also very easy to clean, whereas I don't have to reach to the end of the aquarium. These have all been placed vertically, so my arm can barely reach the end. All the sponge filters from my growing tanks and the tanks in front, I, I have sponge filters all over the place. I have some in the breeding as well. I love these filters. They're all powered by my gigantic pump that if you remember one of my first videos as well, where I showed uh, my panic when there was a power outage and some water had gotten into it. Luckily, I was able to salvage the pump and salvage the fish. I was very lucky with that. Now, it's very high up. You, if you want to reach it, you need, a, you need a ladder, and if water wants to reach it, well, it can't. I don't have many decorations in the growing tanks. I sometimes, I put a couple just because I like to give them a little place to hide if ever they're stressed out, if ever, I don't know, someone's running down the row, who knows what, what can happen. At least they have a little safe zone. Please don't judge my glass tops. I know they're not very nice, but I haven't had the time to fix them up. 
Another time I will. As for lighting, the fish are not on the switch, they're on a the timer. So they have light every day for many hours because in order to grow fish, they need food and they need light. Within my growing facility, I also have two aquariums of Tanganyikans that I breed. I only breed two species. Um, it's a lot of work, it's very long, and I found it just easier to import them. And that way I got a lot more variety. But the species I keep because I just can't get rid of them and their little raccoon faces, I'm way too attached, is my Julido Chromis. I have the Regani Kipili, and I also have the Transcriptus Pemba. So these fish are great parents. I will leave their babies with them until they're about an inch and a half. And eventually I'll just take out the decorations, take out the babies and let them grow separately. But until then, I just leave them. They're happy, they're a nice, happy family. The older brothers and sisters, they protect the younger brothers and sisters. So it's really cute to watch. Once my fish reach an appropriate size, when they're about three quarters of an inch long, I move them to my 75 gallon tanks. That way they can grow and they have a lot more room to swim around. I keep them in there until they're uh, an inch and a half to two inches long, where I bring them to Richards, our associate, who grows them in his place until they reach the three inch mark. So it's a lot of logistics to grow peacocks. It takes about, like I said in my previous video, a year and a half to grow them to full size. And a lot of work, a lot of observation, and a lot of love. That is for the peacocks. For the embunas, I will bring them to the 75 gallon tanks as well. But embunas, are, I usually sell them around two inches. So I will bring them to the front after that. So I don't bring them to Richards. In some cases, for the yellow lab, for instance, it's a perfect dither fish. So if ever I have some of my breeding peacocks that are getting aggressive, I take some of my growing labs and put them with, with the peacocks to grow. The thing is, since they're eating three millimeter food and they, they get a lot of it, I mean, these are, my, my fish are well fed. They grow a lot faster. Also, they're a lot less in the aquarium. So I can get some yellow labs that are a lot bigger as well. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. As we reach the 1,000 subscriber milestone, I want to thank everybody who's already subscribed and who has been liking and commenting on my videos. Thank you so much. Every time I post a new one, I get so much love and so much encouragement that I'm always so excited to buckle down and work on my next project. If you're just joining us, welcome to the channel. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a great website where you will find my whole list of fish. Don't forget to sub to the channel if it hasn't already been done. So I'll be seeing you next week. Bye-bye.